All right, great. Hello, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining my presentation today. Uh, my name is Paul Razzo. I'm the head of data products and solutions at Air Miles. And today I'm gonna be talking to you about data and how we leverage data as our unfair advantage. So through the course of my presentation, I'm really gonna focus on three different areas. But first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our data. What makes it so unique and why is it such an unfair advantage? The second area I'm gonna talk about is our capabilities and how we've leveraged analytics, data science, and data engineering skills combined to really make the most out of the information that we have access to. And lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about our solutions and how we've taken our data and our capabilities, and we've merged them together a little bit to start to understand how we build scalable data products within our organization. Before we get started, a little bit about me. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Paul Razzo. I work at Air Miles. I've been with the organization for about three years. And my role has really changed a little bit over the years. I started working a little bit more on the you know, data analytics and data science consulting and kind of recently moved over into data products and solutions space. I had the opportunity to work with some pretty cool organizations. I spent some time working at MLSC, Maple Leafs Sports and Entertainment, uh, with the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Toronto Raptors, and Toronto FC. Uh, before then, I spent some time with Boston Pizza and even at Red Bull. Um, and I know what you're thinking, like, wow, that's a very wide range of different industries. Uh, you know what, it's been really exciting because from a data perspective, I find that no matter where I work, there's always an opportunity to leverage data to help, you know, the, the organizations that I work for drive, you know, additional incremental commercial value. And it's funny because at Air Miles, we're a coalition loyalty program. So I work with retailers across a wide range of different industries. And so funny enough, I find my experiences and my past have really helped me, you know, understand different business models over at Air Miles. And so I've got a ton of experience working in the space, really focused a lot on analytics and data science early on in my career. And then, as I mentioned, I kind of focused a little bit more on the engineering and data product space recently. And now I'm kind of moving a little bit more to data strategy. How do I put a bow on everything and wrap it all together? As you can tell by the photo on the left-hand side, I'm a huge and avid sports fan. Uh, and actually, I specifically picked this picture because not only do I love sports, but this was a great moment for me. So this was earlier this summer. I got the opportunity to go back to the uh, Sky Dome or the Rogers Center, as they call it, apparently, uh, to watch a game, which was great. And, and that's that's me and my girlfriend there. And it was a really cool experience. Uh, and just a reminder that, you know, we're, we're coming out of this COVID pandemic, hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later. And so just a gentle reminder, everyone, I hope you're staying safe, happy and healthy. But enough about me, let's talk about Air Miles. So Air Miles is a massive, massive loyalty program, and it's actually the most recognized across the country. We have actually 11 million Air Mile collector accounts across Canada. That means that two out of three households in Canada are active Air Miles collectors. Those cards that people possess are being swiped all the time. In fact, an Air Miles card is swiped about a thousand times a minute, which is huge. You know, we have many different retailers where collectors can earn miles and they're using their cards and they're using their cards quite a bit. Even just throughout this slide, someone will swipe their card about a thousand times. And that's on the earn side. But we also have a part of the program where collectors can redeem their miles for travel or merchandise. And people are doing this every two seconds of the day. So Air Miles is a brand that's been around for almost 30 years. And we have some massive scale across the entire country. And you have the ability to earn and redeem your miles at over 300 leading Canadian partners and retailers across the country. So this is a really, really, really massive program. And our collectors have the ability to collect miles in many different ways. And so you can do so on everyday purchases. So when you go and gas up, you can swipe your card and earn miles towards that purchase. We also have the ability for our collectors to engage a lot of our digital channels through our own digital channels, our partners' digital channels, and get access to bonus offers or ways in which you can get more miles by spending more within the current you know, retailer that you're shopping at or by shopping across the coalition. We also have ways in which our collectors can accelerate their earn, and that's by using our Air Miles credit cards. And so we partner with both Emo and Amex to have access to credit cards so that you can generate miles on every single purchase that you make using your credit card. So, of course, with a program this size, with 11 million collectors swiping their card a thousand times a minute and redeeming constantly through all of the different channels, this really gives us access to a lot, a lot of data. So let's talk about that data. At Air Miles, we have not just big data, but really big data. And that's because we've created partnerships with or, re or relationships with our partners for the ability to collect some of their first party data as well so that we can start to incorporate it into our own ecosystem. 
So of course, with the Air Miles program, we have the customer ID. Loyalty programs going back to the inception really started because we wanted to identify, how do I know that it was Paul who shopped at my store? And that's really where the Air Miles card starts to play a role. Air Miles can identify that Paul is customer number one, two, three, four, five. And then as the program starts to expand, we also understand that Paul is shopping at a bunch of different retail locations. And that gives us a ton of breadth of data. And then over time, when we start to invest a lot more in our digital channels, that gives us access to even more data and program data that we have access to. And then of course, as Paul continues to shop as an Air Miles collector, and he's doing his grocery shopping and he's spending money at other retailers, we have depth of information as well. Or in other words, what is Paul actually buying? What is he putting in his cart? He's buying apples, oranges, granola. What is he purchasing? How many times is he filling up his car and how much is he spending when he does so at the pump? So all of this information truly, truly is our unfair advantage. And if you think about it, we have a ton of information that we believe spans across an entire 360 degree view of a customer and information that we've been collecting for almost 30 years now. And so this is just a really big picture, but it's to give you an idea of all the different touch points that we have within our business. And so I'm gonna start over here into the consumer profile piece. So this is information that we have as part of the program. So when you sign up for an AMRS card, we know your enrollment information. We have a little bit of an idea of how you're engaging with our digital programs. We know your location. And that's some good information that we can use to provide better experiences for you, right? Over on the right-hand side over here, there's location information. So yes, where you live, but also where are you shopping? And what are the trade areas that you're a part of? And what are some of the retail locations that fall within that trade area? Are they Air Miles partners? Are they non-Air Miles partners? And how do we use that information? Consumer transaction, the light blue is really important to us because again, we've created the relationship with our partners to not just become a loyalty provider, but also a data provider. We have access to their information, which enables us to do much, much, much more and provide insights back to them, right? Category spend. How often is Paul shopping you know, at Metro versus other retailers? Or how often is he actually redeeming some of the offers that we're sending him? And how do we use some of this information to make better business decisions and create better experiences for Paul? We also create data. And so that's really around the consumer segments piece. And there's a lot of information I'm going to talk about in my presentation around this concept. So we have access to information, but how do we use it? So this is where we infer things like Paul's life stage or Paul's propensity to spend in e-commerce versus in store. What is his current value and what is his potential value over time? Then lastly, media exposure. And there's access to third-party information that we have. It gives us the ability to understand how Paul interacts with digital properties across many, many, many different channels, Google, Facebook, our own channels, our partners' channels. And this helps us paint a picture a little bit about how Paul wants to be communicated to. So all this together, we have a really, really broad, holistic view of a customer. We've developed 23,000 and actually more count and accounting attributes about our collectors. And we've started to focus a little bit about how we start to integrate a lot of this information into our technology and our marketing stacks that we own and our marketing stacks that our partners own. And as I mentioned earlier, loyalty was really started because it was seen as a path to personalization. A lot of our retailers came to us with the exact same struggle. They said, hey, well, we've got lots of customers and we're making a ton of money, but we can't identify them. And so that's where the Air Miles card started to play a role. They said, well, if you use the Air Miles card, well, now you can actually start to identify those customers and you know who they are. Right? You know that it's Paul that's coming in twice a week. You know how much he's spending. And also, you know what he's putting in his basket. And you might be able to use that to understand more about Paul and to communicate with him. But from my perspective, this has really evolved over the years into a big, big, big hot topic in the industry. And that's personalization. Now, not only can we identify Paul, but we have a relationship with Paul. We can communicate with Paul. We can send him offers on products that we know he's going to like because he's leveraged our data and our capabilities to understand and predict what he might be able to enjoy. And we've leveraged our digital communications and our channels to be able to speak directly to Paul and not just broadly to a group of people that might look like Paul. So that's the position that loyalty is really playing in our business and in our partners' businesses. But that's our data, and there's a ton of data. But what really makes our data important is our capabilities that we've centered around our data. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the next step. Because it's not just about the data. And so I stole this visual from Gardner because it really resonated with me. You know, before we used to always talk about people, process, and technology. And if you have really good practices around those three pieces, you can do really great things with your business. But then data become the center of everything, every single thing that we do. 
And data was the new you know, oil and it was really valued really highly. And then data started to play a role in the center of people processing technology. And it wasn't just about having access to information, but more about what you do with that information that really drives your business forward. So at AirMiles, we made massive investments over the last couple of years, not only in just our platforms, but in also our capabilities or our talent. We currently have over 100 people working across many different facets within data to help generate a lot of commercial value from our data asset that we just re recently spoke about. So we've got analytics folks, and our analytics folks work across many different areas of the business, reward analytics, program analytics, and more specifically, partner analytics. So they can help our partners understand more about their business using the loyalty data that we have access to. We've also invested a lot in data science. And so we've got about a team of 10 to 12 data scientists who are heavily focused on predictive modeling and also leveraging a lot of machine learning techniques to try to incorporate a lot of these learnings into our business. And again, further our program and further our business, our, our partners' businesses. With great data becomes great responsibility. And there goes data engineering. We've developed our own in-house data hub platform which is a very slick and sophisticated, simple to use data lake architecture that allows us to grab data from multiple different sources, enable our data science and data analytics teams to do more with that data. And then again, provide access to that data to our partners. So again, starting to flip the script they're really around holding our data close to our chest, but making it available for everyone so that we can start to, going back to the previous image, put data at the center of everything that we do. And then lastly, and this is an area that I've been working in a lot in the last year or two, one to two years, is around data products. How do we take a lot of the great work that's happening in the organization and stitch them together in a data product so that we can scale it to more partners? How do we get more value for people who are leveraging a lot of the products and solutions that we're using today? How do we start to do that across many, many, many different retailers and across many, many, many different touch points within our business? Within those resources, we have a ton of different capabilities. And you know what? They really span across a bunch of different areas, but they can be kind of organized into three different areas. There's data access, storage, and management. Of course, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that we have access to information in a safe, secure, and reliable way. And so in a minute, I'm going to talk a little bit about Data Hub, and that's our platform that we use to ingest, store, process, and kind of enable a lot of the second phase, which is around analysis and measurement. Our analytics team, I think, is about 40 to 45 folks who work across many different areas of the business. And they need to focus on being business savvy, working with the parts of the organization that really need to know how I can move my business forward. They need to spend significantly less time wrangling data and organizing data. So that's really where we start to work together a little bit to enable these folks. And then lastly, and this is kind of combining our data science and our data product organizations, it's scaling our machine learning solutions. We've got great investments in capabilities. How do we scale them so many different partners can use these products? And how do we make investments in platforms that are performing over time as we get access to more information and as we work with more retailers who wanna make sure that our products are driving value for them and they're incredibly performant over time. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on each one of these areas over the next few slides. And let's start with Data Hub. And Data Hub is a fancy name that we gave to our data lake environment. And it really started because, as I mentioned, as a coalition loyalty program, there's information that we own and there's information that we collect on behalf of our partners. So our data sources vary quite heavily, actually. We have some partners that provide us information in completely different ways. And also some of us provide it in streaming, some of us provide it in certain batch. And so in order for us to get access to many different data sources, we had to invest in a platform that gives us the ability to scale and be very nimble with how we're ingesting a lot of that information. After the ingestion, we need to create a process for storage. And so we've got many, many, many different ways in which we can ingest and store information and leveraging a lot of our Amazon products as well to enable us to do so. Recently, we have invested in the third layer around processing information, creating pipelines and analytical layers to again, enable a lot of the analytics and data science teams to do more of their work. And so that's where the analysis starts to come into play. If we can create base layers, then all of a sudden the analytics team doesn't need to query a database to understand the sales metric they can just query a catalog to understand what that sales metric is. And now all of a sudden they're three steps faster at performing their analytics and the report, and they're spending more time working with their partners. And lastly is action. And this is really important to me personally. It's combining the strategy and the platforms and everything that we've invested in the last couple of years and enabling it and integrating it through our AMRP channels, our AM Miles channels, providing access to dashboards and information in a really, really, really slick and automated way. So that again, we can spend more time figuring out the so what and less time wrangling and putting data together. So this is really what our data engineering team is focused on, and it's quite a bit. AirMouse is really powered by our ability to conduct analytics, and like I said, across many different areas of the business. 
These are the four areas that we really focus a lot of our attention on. So partner analytics is really working closely with our partners, customer lifecycle management, clustering algorithms, understanding your customers in a way that we can help support given access to the information that we collect from our partners and also our program data. On the program side, well, this is really important for us. We want to encourage participation in the program. We want collectors to continue visiting our partner locations, swiping their card, and we want to personalize a lot of the experiences that they have so that they can consume information and offers and experiences that are meaningful to them. So this is really where our program analytics team focuses a lot of their attention. Down on the bottom right, our digital analytics team. And so this is a recently formed team that's starting to focus on not only our own digital channels, but also the digital channels of our partners. As consumers and collectors, we like to interact with properties in many, many different ways. I might go to the Shell app, and then I might go to the Air Miles app, and then I might go to the Shell pump. So understanding that landscape and how we can really use that inter those interactions to drive better funnel behavior and down to an actual transaction is really what this team is focused on. And lastly, rewards. You know, when a lot of people think of the Air Miles program, they think of the earn part. But there's a huge part of the business that is focused on our, our, our merchandise and our travel redemption. So our rewards analytics team focuses on what items do we display? What do we price them at? And how do we personalize the experiences so that when Paul wants to book a trip for his family down to Florida, we can make sure that we're communicating his ability to do so, how many miles he has and how close he is to achieving his goal. And lastly, data science and machine learning. And we've really spent a lot of time focusing in this area in the last couple of years. Again, elevating our ability to not just understand our customers better and help our partners' businesses, but predict what might happen. And so we started with a little bit of business strategy. What are the problems that our partners are trying to solve? I'm going to move into the predictive models like everyone else, yeah, regression modeling and clustering algorithms to really identify behaviors and patterns. But we started to move a little bit more in a different direction over the last two years. And this to me is really important. And this is really the yellow and blue areas on the right hand side. We started to develop our capabilities in a scalable way. So instead of making sure that we have one algorithm that works just for one partner, we're starting to develop very common code and the ability to query specific partner data into an algorithm. Therefore, we can scale our solutions and maybe even wrap them together in a little bit of a data product so they can be easily integrated into the next piece, which is our technology stack. Our marketing technology stack, we've made a lot of investments recently into Adobe and other areas to communicate with our partners. What we need to make sure that we continue to do is leverage the value of our data continually so that we can build in the intelligence into our technology stacks. When we have predictive models, how do we make sure that we're communicating the right things to our partners and to our collectors? So that's where that area has really started to take shape. And there's a lot of work to be done there. I know I'm talking a lot about it, but this is really a big area of focus to me. Going back to the purpose of the presentation, our unfair advantage is our data and our ability to leverage our capabilities around it. But when we make sure that we integrate with technology, that's really where we start to drive a lot of value. And lastly, we've really started to dabble into machine learning. And if you join a lot of the other presentations from some of my colleagues, and I think tomorrow, they're going to be talking a lot about the products that we've built around machine learning. And really the big driver for us is this concept that we're calling marketing signals. How do we use advanced techniques like reinforcement learning or transfer learning to increase our speed of learning and also predict what might happen in the, in the future, but also give our partners the ability to understand their collectors in a way that they can't. And that's through marketing signals. So I'm going to give you an example of how we're starting to dabble a little bit into marketing signals and how we're using it to generate incremental value for our partners' businesses. And it starts very simply, what I've been talking about the whole time, which is data and capabilities. How do we combine these two pieces together so that we can really put the right lens on what we need to do to continue to mine our information, our data, and unlock more and more value? And the more we thought about it, the more we said, we got to go beyond just the customer segments and predictive behaviors and spend behaviors and we need to start to generate really tangible use cases that the business can easily consume. That's where we develop marketing signals. So an example of marketing signals is something like looking at, let's say, Paul. Let's say that's me. And let's say we understand a lot about how Paul is shopping across the coalition and his program attributes. But now we know a couple of things about him. We know that he recently moved. Well, that's a signal. That's a signal that can be used by our partners to perhaps target them to shop at a different retail location. We know that he's health conscious based on the product that he's putting into his basket, and maybe the product that he's redeeming on the reward website. We also have a little bit of a category spend, showing our partner the opportunity to get him to be more of a loyal customer. We might know that he's a new dad. We might know that he's digitally engaged. We might be able to use these pieces of information to target our, or work with our partners to find very targeted strategies 
that work to answer their kind of goals and objectives. But again, leveraging a lot of the signals that we're able to produce as part of the coalition program. And we're bringing it really all together. So that was just a fancy way of saying that we're taking our data and our capabilities and we're trying to enhancing, we're trying to enhance a lot of what we do so that we can build out this process, right? Receive information all the way through to analysis and making sure that everything that happens in between becomes automated, scalable, and drives a ton of value for not just our, our collectors and providing them better offers and experiences, but also for our partners. So really with all of that, I've been talking a lot about data as our unfair advantage. But really our true unfair advantage is our ability to combine our data with our talent and our technology. And this is really what I think the beauty of data is. It's not just having access to information and our unparalleled understanding of 11 million customers across Canada, but it's combining with, with our talent and people that focus in different disciplines across data so that they can leverage the data to do more with it, understand it and truly make meaningful decisions from both a business and technology perspective. And lastly, how do we integrate that with our technology stack? How do we communicate with our partners and with our collectors in a way that makes sense, that they want to be spoken to, personalized experiences and offers that are truly meaningful and that we're leveraging, again, from our data asset? So our goal remains the same, and that's to leverage our data asset to generate incremental value for our collectors and our partners. For our collectors, they just want to earn more miles and they want to get faster to that reward so that they can redeem their miles for a trip down south or for a Dyson vacuum or whatever it might be. For a partner, they really want to understand their customers better and they want to find that one-to-one -one way to communicate with their partners. So this is really our true unfair advantage. It's our ability to combine it all together. And speaking of combining it all together, the last part of my presentation is going to speak a little bit about how we've wrapped these capabilities together and what I like to call our data solutions. So I'm going to talk about a couple of different solutions that we've started to invest in. And they really you know, answer different questions within our business. The first is our data sharing platform. This is really exciting. We spent a lot of time focusing on how this comes to life. And so we've partnered with Snowflake and Snowflake has enabled us to share information two ways and collaborate with our data with our partners. And so we have access to their transactional data. How do we provide that information back to them? And how do we collaborate in a space that's safe, secure, and honestly really performant? Excuse me. So that if we want to conduct our own analysis, we can do so in a really fast and efficient way. And so it's an online web-based UI platform, simple to use and incredibly secure. Again, giving our ability to collaborate more around our data. We don't want to be a closed shop. We want to open ourselves up so that we can work with our partners in the right way that makes sense to solve our partners' goals. We've also invested a lot in machine learning personalization. And there's really two products that you may have heard us speak about before, Smoky and Precision. And the other product that we've designed from a machine learning perspective, but again, we're starting to move towards integrating these solutions into our technology stack. So Smokey is a really great customer lifecycle management predictive algorithm that allows us to determine the best basket offer to send to an individual. So you can send Paul an offer that says, hey, Paul, spend an extra $20 at a specific partner location or buy some of these products and we're going to give you extra additional bonus miles. What we've typically seen is a two times increase in response rate when we've leveraged our machine learning algorithms versus using traditional business rules. And the second is Precision. And Precision is a very straightforward product recommendation engine that we've been able to leverage across many different retailers in our, in our coalition program. Very straightforward product recommendation engine that com combines you know, retention offers or, hey, Paul, you bought this in the past. Maybe you want to buy it again and earn an additional 10 miles, right? Or associated products like, hey, Paul, you're on constantly buying cheese. You might also want to buy these specific crackers that pair well with that cheese. And then supplementary products say, hey, Paul, you often buy you know, this type of cheese. What if you, do, you know, buy this brand of cheese instead? And that way we're helping our partners increase the amount of partner that, that our collectors are shopping in their business. And so with our grocery retailers, for example, we're increasing their basket size and we're kind of opening up the collector's range, the different products they have access to. And lastly, airmiles.ai. Uh, we're very, very, very happy to announce that we're recently um, going to be releasing this platform. We partner with our friends at Google and Looker, and we've enabled a completely different experience around data and reporting. This is, so it's a completely secure web-based platform that allows our internal and external stakeholders to collaborate around our data in a very easy to consume way. And so you'll log into a web UI, airmiles.ai is the web URL that you'll navigate to. We've enabled single security sign-on. That way we can make sure that everything that is behind the wall is super safe and secure. 
And it's incredibly scalable and performant because underneath Looker is actually our Snowflake environment. So as we increase the amount of data that's powering some of these analytics, it doesn't impact the performance all that much, which is great. So again, just a way in which we're taking a look at a lot of the capabilities and a lot of the analytics that you see on the right-hand side and making them available so that we can collaborate more around our data and understand what we should do next and less time wrangling pieces of information together. And this is just a list of all the data solutions that we have, and we really bucket them in three different areas. Data access, and so that was the data sharing platform. Analytics, that's airmiles.ai, and a few other tools that we have access to and that we've developed over the years. And personalization, and that's smoky precision and predictive algorithms that we can start to embed into our technology solutions to create better experiences for our collectors. And again, give them that one-to-one -one ability, or give our partners that one-to-one -one ability to communicate with collectors or with their customers that they haven't really been able to do. And so with that, what's next for us? And so it's really a couple of different things. We wanna to continue to unlock value from our data asset. I spoke before 23,000 attributes, a lot of information. How do we continue to unlock value from that data asset? And how do we increase the amount of transparency that we have with our collectors? A lot of our collectors want personalized experiences. And so they have access, we have access to information. They want those experiences because they're expecting that if we're leveraging their data. Supporting partners' goals and objectives with data solutions is something that we're going to continue to do and also further integration with our marketing technology so we can enable our partners to do so. Some of our partners are investing in their own technology stacks. No problem. How do we take our data and enable it so that we can integrate not just with our own solutions, but with theirs? And lastly, how do we leverage everything that I'm talking about today, our data, our capabilities, our solutions, and our MarTech, so we can continue to reward more Canadians every single day? As air miles, that's what we're on the path to doing. And that's really why we believe that data is our unfair advantage. Thank you so, so, so much for joining my presentation today. I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, and if you have any questions, I, I think we're doing questions now. I'm not sure, but you can always reach out to me afterwards and I can answer them then. Thank you very, very, very much.